Family of Ahmad Arbery have been at the courthouse every day for this 13 day trial. They've listened to more than 20 witnesses testify, some in graphic detail, and have had to endure through the defense's attempts to portray Ahmad as an alleged habitual criminal whose death was no one's fault but his own. Let's bring back my guests, veteran prosecutor and BNC's legal contributor, Paul Henderson, C.K. Hoffler, the immediate past president of the National Bar Association and CEO of the C.K. Hoffler firm in Atlanta, and jury consultant and attorney, Robert Swafford. Um, before the break, we talked about the disparaging comments about Ahmad that was made by defense attorney Laura Hogue during her closing argument that caused Ahmad's mom to walk out of the courtroom. Let's take a listen to what Wanda Cooper Jones said about that moment. When I heard um, prosecutor the hoax, she described Ahmad as his long legs and his dirty, long toenails. Mm. That was just a beyond rude. Regardless of what kind of toenails he had, what size legs he had, mm. that was still, still my son. And my son actually was running for his life in that description. CK, you know, we get so focused, and rightly so, on the verdict, right? Um, getting justice or accountability in this case for Ahmad's family, or just in general, when we have cases like these. But we never talk about what happens after that, right? We never talk about what trials do to families what this may be doing to Ahmad's family, what this may be doing to Ahmad's mom, um, and how we repair that, or can that ever be repaired? I honestly don't think it can be repaired. I've sat with many families who have gone through the ravages of a trial. And trial, taking a family through a trial when there's a wrongful death, when there's a shooting, when there's a killing, is, is like having an open wound sticking a knife in it, turning that knife, and then pouring alcohol on it. Because they hear the story, see the evidence over and over and over again. And there's never really a hearing, there's never really healing, and there's never really closure. And that's the impact on the family, the inability to see closure. So hopefully, hopefully, by the verdict, this family will begin the process of healing and begin the process of seeking closure, if they can. But because of the celebrity of this case, if you will, because of the high profile nature of this case, because of the heinous nature of this case, and because some equate it to a modern day lynching, they're going to hear the stories over and over and over again, probably for years to come, and closure is going to be very difficult for them. But they are people of faith, and that is why the faith community stood by them day in and day out, even when it wasn't popular to do mm. so, so many people supported this family. I, that was that was the point I was going to get to next, Paul. The way that this family, Ahmad's family, um, can heal and and start to get closure is by getting the support of their community and and these pastors. Um, and so to have the defense try to take that away too is is it's just it, it, it's unspeakable. Heinously offensive is the word that I think you're thinking of, because that's what it was. And if you look in context as to what their experience was in that courtroom, separate from losing their child in the way that they did for doing something innocently, for essentially being black in that neighborhood, that's, that's what happened. They had to come into this courtroom to stand up for him to be his representative in that courtroom. And they couldn't even just sit there and listen to the facts and the evidence. Instead, they had to suffer the indignities, the vitriolic arguments, the unnecessary and racist allegations being hurled, not just at their son, but about them as well. And for all of us as people of color that had to listen to that as part and parcel of the presentation from the defense is the insult to injury on top of the death. And so I understand as a prosecutor, I've worked with many victims over my career. I know and truly understand the pain that they are expressing from having experienced this trial and how much more they need to heal from what they had to experience in that courtroom beyond the indignity of having those three men kill their son. 
that's the magnitude, that's the relevant, and that's the depth of pain that they have to overcome, regardless of what this verdict is, because this was their experience over these past few weeks, hearing the insults and hearing the comments from the defense attorney that, uh, as I said before, were just racist. That's part now of their pain that they're going to have to deal with. That's going to follow them as they leave this court and as they leave this trial. Robert, do, do we have um, to own some of that blame in, in making this harder for these families? And when I say we, the media, um, we talk about how pressures from uh, nonstop, co nonstop coverage and, and the demonstrators outside of the courthouse and, and the type of pressure that the jury might be feeling, but what does that mean for families as well? I mean, it seems like a double-edged sword. Well, I, I, I'll tell you that that I've worked with you know countless victims doing witness preparation because that's a part of my job is to prepare people to testify, and and one of the things that I'm very careful about is I don't make them tell the actual traumatic story, the actual details of the trauma, very many times. Like I save that for right before trial. We'll, we'll talk about other tools and everything to prepare, but I know that there was a trauma that you affect uh, whenever you hear that your child has been killed. That is a traumatic experience. And then when you see the images of it, that re-traumatizes you a second time. And then every time that you have to tell the story again to re-experience this, those are additional traumas. But in this situation, I think the press coverage, for the most part, especially the press coverage of a station like yours, uh, validates the family. Uh, they understand uh, that people are on their side. Uh, I, I think that, that having the press being able to say, hey, we hear you, uh, and we are not only just hearing you, we're going to speak out and make sure that other people hear you, uh, uh, that actually, can, I think, can at some point become a bomb for the family that feels not heard in so many situations. Well, speaking of being heard or not being heard, we heard from Ahmad's parents who spoke out today. Um, let's play a clip of those comments. She presented that the, the evidence again very well. I do think that we will come back with a guilty verdict. And I want to leave you with this. Um, God has brought us this far and he's, and he's not going to fail us now. Amen. We will get justice for Ahmad. I'm just giving all glory to God for number one. And what I seen in that courtroom this morning just really was devastating. But I'm just thanking God that God showed us everything, showed us all the evidence to convict these men. And so I know God, like Wanda saying, brought us this far to leave us now. That's right. So I know we're gonna get a Amen. get the burden on these men. That's right. I'm not gonna take it. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. CK, um, you mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. This family is extremely religious. They're relying on God to guide them through this, this trial. Um, the good thing is they felt heard by the prosecution, that they laid out this case to their satisfaction and they really believed in the evidence that they presented. And that's, that's very powerful. I mean, I've spoken to Mr. Arbery and I, I just wanna remind viewers and listeners that it was Mr. Arbery and Ahmad's mother that were relentless, that absolutely were responsible for the prosecutor who failed to indict and who, by the way, at the scene of the accident, one of them, McMichaels, called the prosecutor and she told them what to do and told the police to stand down. It was Ahmaud Arbery's mm -hmm. family, father and mother, that made the difference and made sure she was not reelected, number one. And she's facing a trial as well because of corruption. Number two, it was the strength of that family, their faith, their belief. Their, you could see the community, faith communities coming out to support them. So this is a dynamic family that has suffered more than we ever should, but to God be the glory for them and we are in prayer for them, absolutely. 